Warning, this video contains conversations about childhood trauma. Might be triggering to some folks, just wanna let you know. Healing childhood trauma is not easy. And pretty much everybody has some level of trauma. I truly believe that. But I have found some really unique ways to heal my trauma that involve playing with dolls. And today we're going to talk about other ways that people have found to heal childhood trauma and reclaim their childhoods. Sometimes we don't realize that we are carrying childhood trauma with us. And sometimes we do realize it, but we don't realize the depths and the layers of it. And that's kind of where I'm at now at the age of 53. I mean, I understood that mo like most people, especially people who grew up in the 70s like I did, there's dysfunction, okay? <laughs> um, I think that was, you know, the decade that they coined the term dysfunctional family. And, you know, my my family, you know, was in there. And then at the same time, you know, like a lot of people say, well, show me a functional family. So from that perspective, I think we all carry some childhood trauma. Certainly, if you are alive right now on this planet, the last 18 months to six years have been very traumatizing, which means you have recent trauma, which is also a real thing. You know, post-traumatic stress disorder can be something that you're carrying all the way from childhood as complex PTSD or more recently, you know, something specifically happened to you or in the case of what we're going through we are going through a time period where we are all being traumatized there's just it's just it's happening it's happening to all of us so wherever you fit kind of in these categories you need to figure out ways to work through it and heal it now for me and many of the people who i believe are watching me right now dolls collecting dolls playing with dolls uh, a lot of people are doll artists dolls have been a way a form of therapy to help us heal deal with process our childhood trauma and also reclaim our childhoods from that trauma because what happens very often is that you might end up, like in my experience, for a very long time, when I would think about my childhood, I wouldn't be able to remember the good stuff. And there's a reason for that. It's called a negative brain bias, and it's what, it's what kept us alive, you know, going back to my cave person analogy, but, you know, the, the part of our brain that, that governs what we remember has a stronger, I'm gonna remember this leaning for those berries are poisonous. I ate those berries once before and I pooped my brains out for a week and nearly died, okay? So negative memories are stronger than those flowers I saw on that ridge were really pretty. Not the same level of stickiness to the brain. So because of this negative brain bias, Many people, when they think about childhood, have trouble recalling the good times. And what I would like to be able to remember those good times. And now every once in a while, something does come through and I'm like, oh yes, that was so awesome. I forgot about that. And I, cause I have a feeling that there was actually way more fun and laughter than struggle and, and abuse and dysfunction. And I'm just remembering it and processing it and holding on to it disproportionately. Anyway, so for me, <clears throat> as you can see, I collect dolls. Now I did not realize for a very long time that my love of dolls in part 
was about reconnecting with something from my childhood that gave me joy. But I can tell you right now, I do have very clear and wonderful memories of the dolls I got for Christmas. I can remember almost all of them and I remember that feeling. Um, I remember getting my Charlie's Angels Kelly Garrett doll and I also got the Charlie's Angels um, van. It was like, they never rode around in a van and solved crimes like Scooby-Doo, but for purposes of whoever, I think Kenner was making the dolls, they made them a van, you know, instead of making, you know, Charlie's townhouse or whatever. Um, and uh, I remember that. I remember my Barbie camper. I remember the smell of my Barbie camper. I remember my ballerina Barbie. <gasps> Oh, I can still, I'm right there. I'm in the room on Christmas day, opening her up and realizing that the only way to make her spin was to basically stick your finger in the crown, which did nothing. And then just spinning her with your fingers, but it was okay. It was okay. Cause she was beautiful. I remember when I got my superstar Barbie and I was like, Oh, she's different, but I love her and oh, her earrings and her ring. I remember getting my first baby alive. I also remember getting my second baby alive because my first baby alive got yucky inside because I didn't clean her out. I remember um, getting my Bionic Woman doll. Mm -hmm. I remember my Cher doll. I remember my Barbie townhouse was the first one, the cardboard one with the elevator that you pulled the string. You notice they still haven't really upped their game on how they do the elevator. Now it's like, oh, it's a lever instead of pulling a string. You know what, make it, make it automatic and now you got something, Mattel. So I remember all of that. And I realized, and then I remember playing with my Barbies and playing Barbies with my friends. And we would, you know, share our outfits and our shoes. And I had the little plastic vinyl closet. And I remember what that smelled like. And I remember dressing them up. I remember playing in the Barbie townhouse with my brother, with his evil Knievel doll. I had Daredevil Darcy, by the way, she was the female equivalent of evil Knievel, did all the same stuff, but in pink and she was awesome. And, uh, you know, I remember his GI Joe. I remember he got the $6 million man. So of course my bionic woman had, you know, a friend and, that was my way to escape. That was my happy place. And I remember that happiness. And somehow that memory and those feelings carried over into me developing a hobby as an adult that is collecting dolls. There are dolls everywhere in our house. And there's, there's hundreds of dolls in storage. It's my hobby. I also look at dolls as a form of art. This is my artwork. Like when people come into my house, there's a couple of like painting like things that hang on the walls. But what you really see is you just see all of this color and all of these different dolls and people like just stand there and they look in the curio cabinets where other people would have China and stuff. And they're just like, wow, these are so, what? I, and this is always when they see the Monster High dolls. What are those? What are those? What are those dolls? They're really cool. People always gravitate to the Monster High dolls. And, so they're art for me, but it's also a hobby. And I think that hobbies are our way to heal childhood trauma, to get back to that innocence. There are people who collect trains. There are people who build and collect dollhouse miniatures. There are some other things that have become very mainstream now that people have done for a really long time, but hid it from people. Coloring. Coloring with crayons in a coloring book. I know adults who have always done that, but it wasn't, it wasn't something they shared with people. It wasn't cool. Like they didn't have adult coloring books. So you're over there, you know, in your Blue's Clues coloring book, but I love coloring. I don't do it all the time as a hobby, but I mean, you know, when Caden was little, I'd be like finishing all of those pages. Coloring is just, with crayons. I'm not talking about getting fancy with the markers. And yeah, if you want to do that, that's great. But just, I mean, the smell of the crayons and coloring in a coloring book. Is there anything more childlike? That smell, that feeling, the choices, the this, this, you know, blank slate that you are going to fill in with your choices and do your way and sometimes purposefully go outside the lines. And now that you're an adult, you're like, <laughs> right? 
that is <laughs> reclaiming your childhood. Because there was nothing more annoying than getting yelled at for coloring outside the lines. Be like, seriously? You're going to criticize me about this? And then like, now I got to color inside the lines. So there's something very freeing as an adult about just going <laughs> ham all over a page, you know? During the pandemic, what did people start doing? What were some of the best selling toys? Toys? Puzzles? Board games? Coloring books? crafting, building things like Legos and connects and, and things like that. These toys became things that adults turned to for comfort because toys reconnect us to our innocence. Toys reconnect us to a place we used to be able to go in childhood that was whatever we wanted it to be. It was, it was peaceful, it was fun, it was ours. No outside adulty stuff. No, you can't come in our playhouse. This was our world. And if you do, if you are trying to work through childhood trauma, or if you know you have childhood trauma and you're just not ready to look at it yet, and, and, and there is no rush to do that, okay? I just wanna be really clear. You got to be careful with examining childhood trauma, you know, do it in a safe space with, with a therapist or, you know, a group dedicated to this because it, 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 believe me, there have been times that it has just rocked my world. You know, when I thought that I, I thought that I knew everything or that I remembered everything. And then I remember something you got to be careful. You've got to be careful. And if you do touch on something, let's say something comes to you, okay? Like out of the blue, you remember something and you get that, <gasps> like that just that it's, if, if it's happened to you, that you've, you, a memory has surfaced that you had buried really good and, and you get that, it's, it's just, it's a feeling of panic. It's a feeling of disgust. It's a feeling of horror. There's shame, which isn't yours. You know, when you feel shame about this, know that the shame isn't on you. It's on the people who caused the trauma. I know you feel the shame. We'll talk about shame a lot on this channel, but also check out Brene Brown. She's a shame researcher, okay? Because shame is a huge part of being human. Uh, it's also something that crushes us. But when you're feeling all of the ick, it's good to have handy some hobby or pastime from your childhood. So when you're feeling that, whip out the coloring book and crayons, get out the Play-Doh, sit down with the Barbies or whatever dolls, you know, some, for some people it's baby dolls. Get out the baby dolls, right? Start building those Legos. Whatever it is, jigsaw puzzles. Like jigsaw puzzles kept a lot of people calm and sane during the pandemic. I have a lot of friends who do jigsaw puzzles. Get out a jigsaw puzzle. When you're feeling it, when you're in that horrible place, go to that hobby. That's what we call them when we're adults. When we're, when we're, when we're kids, we call it playing, right? So I'm not even gonna say, get out that hobby. When you feel the ick, go play, go play. Just, you might be like still feeling the ick. You might be crying as you're brushing your American Girl doll's hair or dressing your Barbies or playing with your OMG dolls or rearranging the Rainbow High dolls by color on your shelves. You might be crying while you do that. But doing that while you're processing the emotion is healing you. You know, so there's this quote by Rumi that uh, is an ancient poet that I'm probably going to mangle, but it's something along the lines of our wounds are the places where the light shines through. And so that that is definitely true. And people who have a lot of wounds, if if they do the do the work to clean out the infection um, and the gunk that has accumulated in the wounds can then shine for other people. And that's what I've been trying to do all my life. 
is just keep cleaning out the infections, cleaning out the wounds. I'm never going to fully heal them, but I want them to be able to let the light shine through. And that's what you're doing for yourself when you play. You're healing yourself. You're cleaning out the gunk. It doesn't have to be some psychological process. You know, you don't have to say some magic words to a therapist, although I highly, highly recommend therapy. It can be as simple as sitting on the floor, playing with your Barbies and crying and playing with your Barbies until you stop crying and you start feeling good again. It can be that simple. That right there is therapy. I call it doll therapy and it is huge for me. I'll finish this up by telling you a little story about Monster High dolls. When I, so I have multiple sclerosis, most of you know that I was, I got really, really sick 11 years ago and I became essentially bedridden. And um, we had a bunch of Monster High dolls because my son was, was really into them and I was really into them. And, but you know, my son was eight, you know, seven and eight when the dolls first came out. So, you know, their clothes were missing shoes. They were in different outfits. And uh, I asked Caden to bring me the bins with all the dolls and the clothes in them. And while Caden was at school during the day, I would, I don't know what I was watching on TV. I really don't remember. I honestly don't remember, but I would sit in my bed and I was redressing all of the Monster High dolls and there were dozens of them in their right clothes and out and shoes and matching up the purses and the pets and, uh, and, you know, fixing up their hair. And, uh, sometimes I was sobbing while I was doing it. Um, but a lot of the time I was just not feeling the horror of my situation at all. I was just playing with dolls <laughs> and it was awesome. And it freed me for a while from the pain of what was going on. And that's the beauty of play. And so if you want to call it a hobby, so that you feel like maybe it's more socially acceptable, fine, call it a hobby. You know, I call it play and I call it therapy. And like, I own that, but you know, you don't have to. But I do strongly suggest that if you have not yet reconnected with a childhood joy from playing, something that used to play as a child that you loved, and you're trying to deal with childhood trauma, I say, go find, go, go buy, go get, you believe me, go to a secondhand shop, go to a garage sale, go look in somebody's attic, you'll find it and, and start playing with it again. And I think you'll find that it will help you. It will help you through the pain and help you come out the other side of it. And then maybe you can, you know, clean out the infection and some of your wounds, and then you can start to shine for the people around you and for yourself, right? Cause it's, you know, being, having nasty infected wounds is not comfortable. It's much better to just have light shining through you like a piece of Swiss cheese or stained glass is probably a better metaphor, <laughs> but I'm hungry. So I was like, Swiss cheese, whatever, either way, whatever you want to be, Swiss cheese, stained glass, figure out how you can start to shine and start by playing. So I hope this was helpful to all of you. I do appreciate all of you who are sharing your thoughts and feelings and experiences in the comments. I encourage you to share with, with me and the rest of the folks watching, what is the way that you play and reconnect with your childhood? What is the way that you are helping to heal the child inside of you and reclaiming your childhood? And I will see you again real soon. Until then, know that you are loved. I love you. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye.